welcome to another session of Yoga with Dina. I'll see you on the mat. Foot up towards the ceiling, step your foot by your right thumb, spin your left heel down, inhale, Virabhadrasana, one, warrior one. As you exhale, transition to Virabhadrasana, two. So with warrior two, your arms are about parallel to the mat, making sure your right heel bisects the middle of your left foot. Drop your left palm, flip the right. Come into reverse warrior as you inhale. Exhale, forearm on thigh, left arm comes up and over. See if you can drop, drop your right shoulder away from your ear. So don't, try not to bring your right shoulder up towards your ear. And if you find like it's there, drop it away. Imagine you have an orange between your right shoulder and your idea or enough space for an orange. It's not all the way there. Maybe you do a half bind with your left arm. Maybe you do a full, your right coming underneath. Stay with your breath. Wherever you are. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release those fingers, come back to Virabhadrasana two. Pivot on the ball of the right foot, pointing the left towards the front of the mat, warrior two on the left side. Drop your right palm, flip the left, come into reverse warrior as you inhale. Exhale, forearm on left thigh, right arm comes up and over, extended side ankle. Maybe you keep it here. Maybe you do a half bind on the side and maybe even a full. And if you're doing a full, your hands meet behind your back, fingertips come together, and maybe you try on this side to come into a, a bird of paradise. So taking your right foot, stepping it to the top to meet the left. This is only if you're doing a bind, and then you can float that left leg up and maybe you extend the left leg. Wherever you are coming back, do you extend a side angle, undo the bind if you're still in a bind. Inhale, come back to Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Straighten out both of the knees, coming back towards the top to Warrior 2 with your right foot facing. And then on the back foot, lift up that heel as you come into a crescent lunge. So when you're in the crescent lunge, that left heel is lifted. You're engaging that left quad. Bring off your ribs still to the front of the mat. Bring your palms together in front of your heart center. We don't have a lot of energy here, but moving slightly forward so you can take your left leg, cross it over to figure four. This can be easier to do as part of a Surya Maskar B because we're moving with energy. But from standing, you can just have to give it a little bit more movement. See if you can bend a little bit more to your right knee. Nice, Melissa. Nice adjustments. Try not to lose my balance. We're checking you guys out. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, you're gonna take your left leg, send it all the way, all the way back to Virabhadrasana three. Maybe you bring your arms by your sides or maybe you point your arms forward. Square off your hips just like in bird dog at the beginning of class, nice and heavy through this left hip, pointing those toes down. Staying with your breath, take one more inhale. Exhale, come back to Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Oh my gosh, we did it. Woo, we did it. All right, switching to the other side. <clears throat> so left foot facing forward, your warrior two to the left. Coming off that back heel, inhale, crescent lunge. So crescent lunge with your left foot forward. Everyone's got this, you're doing awesome. Stay with your breath, so let the breath control your movement. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, palms together, back foot comes forward, cross it over, figure four. Bend that left knee. So bend the knee as if you were in chair pose, 
All you're doing is just crossing the foot over on the knee. So you're crossing it. Make sure that right foot is flexed. So you can see the tops of the foot. Bend into that left knee a little bit more. Everyone's doing awesome. Take one more inhale. Exhale, send that right leg back and maybe your arms are by your side, squaring off that hip. Maybe your arms are facing forward. One more inhale. Exhale, come back to warrior two with control. Woo! Toes turn out and move side to side in Skandasana. And if your foot doesn't come all the way flat on the ground, that's okay. You're still getting the benefits of your skandasana. And you smile. You have the effects of the practice in your body, in your soul. Once you feel complete, once you feel completed, come into Malasana or Yogic Squat. So your feet are about mat width apart, your toes turned out. And see if you can come into your Malasana first before you add your elbows inside your knees. So see if you can come into it, shoulders away from your ears, crown of your head parallel to the ceiling, and then maybe you add your elbows. So see if you can, and if your feet are not on the ground, you can always add a mat at the bottom of the heel. So if your heels are high up, you don't have to feel like you can't be in this shape. And maybe close your eyes. Let yourself smile here if your eyes are closed or not, whatever it is. Smiling just transforms how you feel. Hmm. It lets your body know you're okay. It lets your mind know you're okay. Just like the breath, focusing on your breath. And see if you can find stillness in the smalasana. Begin to return to the class, to return to the space, wherever maybe you went. Bring your hands on the ground. And if you'd like, you're, in, you're set up for it. A lot of people take Bakasana right the I think this is why everyone always does Bakasana as a first arm balance. Because if you just place your hands down and you float your hips up, that is theoretically crow. So traditionally the crow is taught so that your knees are a little bit closer and your knees come onto your triceps, right? So you're, you lift your hips up. But if you're in the first variation of your knees kind of on the outside, that's fine. So if this is how you can do it, kind of squeezing your triceps, that is a great way. Eventually, maybe you will transition to having your hips up a little bit higher, knees maybe on the triceps, maybe even closer to the armpits and bend your arms, float forward and float your feet off the ground. And maybe eventually you are able to jump back to Chaturanga as well. Moving through that final little vinyasa. All right, <clears throat> wherever you are, come through your final vinyasa and then grab a blanket. So grab any kind of blanket so it's within reach. Whew. I'm feeling this practice. I hope you guys are all feeling this practice. Okay. Any good boy. All right. With your blanket there, we're going to come into a, uh, we're going to pop into a half pigeon. So to come into a half pigeon, the blanket is just there help you with your outer hip support. 
Come into your downward dog. It's kind of the easiest way to get in. Float your right leg. Bring your right knee behind your right wrist. And then extend your left leg down the mat. Glance back. Make sure your left leg is coming out directly from your hip. Take your blanket. and So if you take a, take a peek, there's space between your right hip and the mat. That's where the blanket should kind of slide into. And maybe you don't have any space and then you don't need a blanket. Or block. Square off your ribs to the front of the mat and then float forward. Your forehead comes onto the mat, maybe your forearms, maybe another blanket or a block, but see whatever you do. You really feel supported by the mat. See if you can let yourself melt into the mat. So let's talk about melting into the mat. Just let everything go. Nothing for you to do except just be here. Present. And if any part of your body is still holding tension, see, see if you can breathe into that. You can stay where you are, or you can come into the full expression of this pose with your hands below your shoulders. Press up, bend your back knee, holding on to the outside of your left foot with your left hand. See if you can come away from the mat, and the right hand comes up towards the ceiling. So it's a little bit of a balance. Take an inhale, glance up. Gently release the back foot hands to the ground, tuck the toes under, and bring your right leg up wherever you are. Open up that hip that was just tucked under and release your right foot to the mat. Float your left leg up towards the ceiling. Bring your left knee behind your left wrist. And my goal here is not to square up your shin to the short side of the mat. That's never my goal. Hopefully that's not your goal. Glance back. Make sure your right leg is coming directly from that hip socket and not to the side because you can really do a number on your hip there because we will stay still. Squaring off your ribs to the front of the mat. Again, check in if there's space. Take a blanket, slide it under. Take an inhale. Maybe glance up. Exhale, fold forward. As you fold forward, let your forehead come to the ground, maybe your forearms. And see if you can begin to let go of your ujjayi breath. So just a nice and gentle breath at this point. This is your restorative breath. Sending that same breath to whatever spot might be calling your name. And either staying here or taking the full expression of pigeon with your hands below your shoulders, pressing up, bend that right knee. Now you hold on to your foot with your right hand. The left hand comes up. Take an inhale here. 
Gently releasing the back foot, hands come to the ground. Well done. Open up that left hip, extend. And find your way back to the mat. Bring your knees to the ground, cross your shins, and come on to your back in the direction you wish to face for your Shavasana. Make sure you have your blankets for your Shavasana within reach. Any other parts you may wish to have. May actually, make sure you have at least one block, maybe two, and your blankets. And then find your way onto your back. Bring your knees into your chest. Give them a gentle squeeze. Rock a bit side to side. And then plant your feet, grab your block, one of your blocks, lift your hips up off the ground, slide your block underneath the sacrum. Your supported bridge pose, supported Satu Bandhasana. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you extend your legs out. In a variation of the Parita Karani, legs up the wall. Palms face up. Begin to, when you're ready, begin to return your feet back to the ground. Lift your hips up, move your block out of the way. Drop your knees to the left, your gaze to the right. Switch your knees to the other side, knees to the right, gaze to the left. And when you're ready, come back to the middle. And set up for your final resting pose. Check in, see if there's anything else you need. Maybe you wish to set up and support it back bend over two blocks. Maybe you wish to just do your traditional Shavasana. Maybe you even want to do legs up the wall. So whatever you choose, check in with yourself. Let your palms face the ceiling. Close your eyes and rest deeply. Shavasana.